wonder if we're worried that if we dream, we might be disappointed. I mean, if we just stick with the status quo, we won't be surprised when things don't work out, right? Dreaming, after all, can feel like we're getting our hopes up. But like it or not, when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples and those gathered in Jerusalem 2,000 year, plus years ago, it changed everything. No longer were the disciples then, or you and I now, mired down in fear. Jesus refused to leave them and us at his ascension, crippled by fear. And certainly, God has more in mind for us than being afraid. In the waters of holy baptism, the Holy Spirit was breathed upon us, dear people, binding individuals, you and I, into community. The Holy Spirit was breathed upon us, and we were given our marching orders. A to-do list, if you will. Before the baptismal gown or dress could come off, before the first forkful of cake got into our mouths, you and I were given a job to do. Each one of us set loose into the world, most likely kicking and screaming, to forgive sin, to share the good news, to work for the welfare of the community, to provide strength to the weak and courage to the fearful, and in all these ways to share with those around us the dream and vision of Christian community. It's the work of all the baptized. Is it scary work? You bet. Every bit of it. Might we fail? Probably. But we'll also have more, su more successes than failures, I think. But rather than letting that possibility paralyze us, rather than letting that possibility hold us back, rather than being afraid, let us remember that God seems to have a way of resting surprise victory from what looks like utter and complete failure. The Holy Spirit, after all, has a way of changing everything. So with that, I want to do some dreaming this morning, and I want you to dream with me. With your bulletin, you were given a three by five note card. And on it, I'd like you to write your dreams for this place. I know, I know, I've asked this question before, and I can tell you, I can promise you, I'm going to ask you it again. Okay? But how will I know your dreams if I don't ask you for them? So, what's your dream for this place? And then once you've written them down, when the offering plate comes around, I want you to put them in there. Because our dreams are an offering to God. And I look forward to reading your dreams, to responding to them, to sharing them with counsel and conversation. And they may even end up in the newsletter. Who knows? But can you imagine all of our dreams brought together, honing our shared vision for what God is up to in this place and how we will live that out in the years to come together? How marvelous is that? Yes, dear people, Pentecost is, a, in a, is an especially good time for us to dream. For we know that God's Holy Spirit changes everything. And we also know that no matter what, that God is with us, always, and even to the end of the age. In Jesus' name, amen.
stand as you are able. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. On the day of Pentecost, each one heard your word in a language they could understand. May we not be obstacles between your word being proclaimed and received by those hungry for it. Transforming spirit. The giving of the Holy Spirit is a cosmic event, encompassing not only all people, but the whole universe you have made. Give us a vision as wide as we can handle, that we never set our sights too small in carrying out the work of your kingdom. Transforming spirit. As the church celebrates its birthday, we give you thanks for our worshiping community, for all the blessings we receive from it, and all the ways we can contribute to it. Strengthen our congregation, its leaders, our synod, and its, our bishop's staff, and all church bodies, and all those whose primary work is to magnify your name in all the earth. Transforming spirit. Spirit of life, pour out your healing upon every, each and every one of us, those with, with visible and invisible ailments, and those too afraid to ask for help. We pray, we pray, ask a special blessing upon Lloyd, Andy, Corey, Jennifer, Andrew, Todd, David, Pam, Ruth, Phil, Carla, Jay, Sally, and Sophia. For those in extended care, we pray for Marilyn, Luann, Clarence, Lucille, Donna, Faye, M, Claris, and Patty. Guard both day and night, dear Lord, those who serve in our military, both at home and abroad. We pray for Reed, Michael, Matthew, Jordan, Lucas, and Mitchell. And for those we name before you now in the quiet of our hearts. Transforming Spirit. For saints of all tongues, tribes, and traditions, we thank you. For every challenge and every joy that lies ahead, we bring our gratitude and ask your protective power. Make us one, O God, as only you can. Transforming Spirit. Into your hands we now commend all these things for which we pray, as we know with confidence that we can trust in you, Lord God, lover of our souls. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share that peace with one another.
our ushers will wait upon us gathering our morning's offerings, our tithes, our gifts to God. have we offer except these gifts for the ultimate benefit of your kingdom a place where all are welcome and each receives you as a precious gift amen the lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your Spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread he blessed it he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had blessed it, he gave it to them all, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Please be seated, and today we will commune via the center aisle.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Go in peace from this place and make peace wherever you go. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. So next week, churches starts at, it's at 9.30, and we're out on the patio, weather permitting, okay? So that's Memorial Day weekend to Labor Day weekend is our summer schedule beginning at 9.30, okay? So now let us sing in your blue hymnals, hymn number 651.
And now, dear people, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.